Where is the sword of Godric Gryffindor? Oh my gosh. Great question. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> You know? Bend over and I'll show you. <laughs> yes. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Oh, nice. You know, I almost could have gotten that one. I did not At least understand somebody that got her movie oh, quote. Oh, no. Oh, it's so I good. Quoted, what? I didn't understand that reference went right over my head. Oh. I oh, do you not know that movie? I've seen it a long time ago. Christmas I've seen it once. Oh, I have the yeah. whole thing memorized. Really? Yeah, that's a great line. Well, from that me. was better than when I threw out the Home Alone quote. Like, what? <laughs> oh yeah. What was that long I don't know. That's because uh, this is it. Someone you said this is it, and I said don't get scared now, and you were like, what? Oh yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> and I got That's there such eventually. a generic quote. I feel like mm. don't get scared. Everybody now. would. <laughs> <Whatever. Yeah. laughs> You're yeah. like, if my anyway. siblings were here, they would have gotten yeah. it in a second. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. You're so not like, true. Wait, scared of what? what is, what's gonna happen? <laughs> But the anyway, bend over and I show you. That, yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's where the Christmas tree. Where are you going to put that huge Christmas tree? Yeah. Bend over and I'll show you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Chef. You got a lot of nerves to be like that. that. Yeah, that's it. All right. <laughs> See you guys later. <clears throat> Um. <laughs> yeah, Danny, have a real Look, response. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it back to the sword. Where do you think it is, Jen? <laughs> are you to answer? No, I don't know where it is because... We don't know when it was swapped out. Mm -hmm. So we just think if this can be trusted, it's fake. And we're trusting these goblins. It's fake. Whatever, whatever. But when was it swapped out? Was it swapped out before Voldemort created a Horcrux or after? Is the fake sword of Gryffindor a Horcrux? Because that would be great. Because it'd be like an insult to Voldemort. He put his... like his part of his soul in these seven awesome objects and one of them is just some fake little thing that <laughs> yeah, would be great funny. but it also could have just been afterwards dumbledore realized it was a horcrux at some point if it was and then was able to swap it out mm -hmm. and keep the real one safe for harry to get it but then i also was thinking this week because i think about harry potter all the time <laughs> um when harry first got the sword wasn't it didn't it like present it to him yeah. because of his bravery? Uh, because he was like a Gryffindor? To a Gryffindor. And so I thought there was a factor in the danger, in the bravery, in the him being like showing the most Gryffindor qualities in that moment. So I thought it definitely was because a worthy Gryffindor is going to show bravery. That's like what a worthy Gryffindor so is. So what I'm thinking is the sword might actually show up to Harry from wherever it is hmm. when the time comes when he's being a worthy Gryffindor. So it almost made me think, do you really have to be looking for the sword? I don't know if I totally... But like where you have to be because he could have had that when he was fighting Voldemort. Hmm. Wait, where is the fake sword right now? You know what I was thinking while you're what? talking? <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> Instead of listening, right. Yeah, what were you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> I was listening and it's no, okay. you don't have to. I, I endorse it. Uh, <laughs> when Dumbledore was interviewing Tom Riddle for a job, yeah, I wonder if he hit it then. Like, he uh. kind of thought, Oh, maybe Tom is after the sword. Like, Dumbledore was, or like around that time. Oh, wow, how crazy! What if during that conversation, neither one of them was actually concentrating on the words they were saying. They were both just trying to read each other's minds. So they're just sitting there like, <laughs> mm, like having this battle um, of mind reading oh. because that's when if Dumbledore could have just gotten a glimpse yeah. of the sword when oh, he's trying to understand what is Voldemort doing here, <clears throat> then that would tell him, oop, sword, swap well, it out, do Dumbledore this whole thing. tell Harry that? Mm. I don't know. He didn't tell him a lot of stuff. He's so annoying. Oof. Dumbledore is annoying? Yeah. Like, give him info. It's <laughs> hurt, Danny. It's intense. <laughs> Dumbledore is annoying. But I'm annoyed at him, too, sometimes. But go on. That was it. I'm just saying he oh. gave him no info. Mm. Yeah, you're right. On anything. And anytime he did try to ask once about the ring, he didn't even really get an answer. It took him forever. Oof. <sighs> Shut him down. But I think did, also yeah. it was for his own thing because he could read his mind, right? It was for Harry's own, um, own protection. Yeah, because Voldemort yeah. can read his mind, get into his mind. So that's interesting. He didn't want it to know too much information. For right. Sure. So that makes sense. But that's what I was thinking. He hid the sword maybe before all this stuff was going down. And then it appeared when he needed it down with the basilisk. Basil. Mm. But then why didn't he have it again? He's been in situations where he's shown bravery. 
maybe he just needs mm. to be on the school campus. Mm. So maybe it's actually hidden somewhere in the school. Okay, interesting. Like it wouldn't leave the school because he to was be in protected. the Ministry of Magic. That's bravery. He went against Voldemort. That's bravery. Like how many other things do he have to do where it doesn't show up? Yeah, yeah, you're right. There were a lot of those moments, but I in in my mind the sword also knows not just if we're assuming the sword knows worthiness it also might know timeliness so the sword wouldn't have helped in these other situations but harry needed the sword against the basilisk so what i'm thinking is the but sword will appear like, when, when he's worthy no. and when he needs the sword like when the sword would actually help the mm. situation um well, I guess he's not going to be in a sword fight with Voldemort, but <laughs> there know. might be another situation where the sword is needed. It's fake sword um, against real sword. It could be like a battle, like who ooh, has the real one. and that would be pretty epic. Yeah, um, I mean, maybe at a point. I don't know. But yeah, where is the sword? That's the the key right now because um, I'm going to go see what that goblin said because it's going to be obvious. Who gave point. him the fake one again? I'm like losing track. You're not really sure. The goblin talks about how um, a few students went up to try to get the sword of Godric Gryffindor or they went to Snape's office. Right. The, the goblin says probably to get the sword of Godric Gryffindor and Snape then took it and then put it in a vault in Gringotts. Um, and the goblins were looking at it before it was being put in the vault. Yeah, probably. So that's how the goblins. So then they were like, okay, they we probably were analyzing got it. it. Yeah, and that was like his last. Uh, what was what was that? The goblins. What was that chapter called? Goblins' revenge. Um, and the revenge was that they said it was the real thing and they hid it in the vault, but really it's a fake sword. Right. So Snape probably thinks it's a fake sword. Um, Voldemort probably thinks that's a real thing, or they all no. Snape probably thinks it's a real sword. Voldemort probably thinks it's a real sword. All the Death Eaters probably think it's a real sword and it's hiding away in, in a yep. Gringotts vault somewhere. Yep. So we at least have that to go on. And it's, it's kind that, of the perfect distraction. Are they hiding it though because they know it can kill Horcruxes? <laughs> Would That would be even better. That would be mm. amazing. Because it maybe could. If it's absorbing all this stuff and if it absorbed like um, things stronger than it, like Basilisk Venom or anything else, like we speculated... If it could, that's great because they think it's safe, but it isn't. The real one is out there. But where? Like John mm. said, it somewhere in Hogwarts, the room of requirement. <laughs> so many places. Is there anything else in Dumbledore's <laughs> office? And uh, again, I was thinking about Dolores Umbridge and when she couldn't get into the headmaster's office. And I'm still wondering if Snape was in there. Yeah. This kind of confirms that. It sounds like he was. Yeah. If they were going to try and break in to steal the sword, it sounds like the the office was already like his, which is kind of disappointing. It sounds like from Phineas Nigellus, again, confirming that Snape's kind of in there. So where else in the school could Dumbledore hide something? Your room. You said that. Of requirement? <laughs> um, my room. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the one with the tiara. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Dragging yeah. on about that tiara. Um, but it also could be somewhere else. It could be in Godric's Hollow. And they just missed it. That would suck. Yeah, that really would. But I'm just thinking of these graves because you can bury things, and yeah. and burying things wouldn't be as, as big of a deal um, with wizards well, because what did it you say? can say like the heart something and the where your treasure is or your heart will be also. Hold on to that. Let's start the podcast oh, yeah, officially, nice. and then we'll go talk about that part, because that's so good. Yeah. Um, anyway, welcome to the podcast. I'm John. Chen. Danny. And Kristen. And this is Harry Potter and the First Time Readers. If you love this podcast, consider supporting us on YouTube or Patreon. Those are our two channels that you can support us. And we're doing all sorts of membership-only content, and we're doing um, book clubs as well. So if you take part in membership, if you become a member of YouTube or Patreon, you can join our book club where we're talking about Harry Potter chapter by chapter. And we're going to start these. We're going to keep doing more and more of them as more and more people come in. But they're pretty fun. They're just like chill times where you can just talk about Harry Potter. Um, so join those, join our membership, and then all the other stuff, Discord and Reddit are where all the action is really happening. We have other social media that you can follow as well, but Discord and Reddit are the two main ones. R slash first time reader and our Discord link is posted in our Reddit post as well. So you can find that pretty easily. 
And then um, all the other stuff that we have going on, we, are, we have we have lots of uh, seasons planned, but unfortunately, season two is going to be on hold for a prolonged period of time. Season two, um, uh, Abby is just really, really busy, so we are going to hold off and recording any more episodes. We're going to pull some of the other episodes, too, and uh, maybe in the future she'll reprise it, but she just is a little too busy right now. So that kind of sucks, but we have more and more seasons coming out. We're very excited for what's going to go on and enjoy these chapters, chapters of Deathly Hallows. So, um, a quick, quick summary of chapter 16, which is Godric's Hollow. Um, this is just where they get to Godric's Hollow. So Harry's walking around, you know, the place where his parents were killed. Mm -hmm. Um, they see a memorial for his parents with him in stone that muggles couldn't see. It looked like a war memorial. Then they go to the graveyard. They're walking around by the church there. It's Christmas Eve. I think they're trying to be like subtle about things and be quiet and, um, and then the chapter ends where they actually find his parents' grave. And we see Harry being really vulnerable and he's like crying and it's kind of a sweet moment. Yeah. Um, so quiet chapter, a lot of like suspense and emotional angst of trying to find the, the grave, which it didn't feel as big leading up to it. And then this chapter, it did feel big. Like you yeah. realize how important it was to Harry. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of cool to read that part. Yeah, it was a good one. So there is a one line with Harry's psyche that I want to talk about where it says they did not discuss Ron at all over the next few days. Harry was determined never to mention his name again. And Hermione seemed to know that was no use forcing the issue. Although sometimes at night when she thought he was sleeping, he would hear her crying. Is Harry being a little too immature here? And Is he being too hard on Ron? Like Ron seems like he's out of the story right now. How is Ron ever going to come back? Where? How does Ron even know where they are at any moment? If Ron regretted his actions immediately, no, not immediately, within a day, but after they had moved, he couldn't find them. So what would he do? Like, I, I just have this hope that Ron's out there doing good stuff for the cause, mm. so to speak. But what would that be? He still has to kind of stay quiet and hidden and stuff. Yeah. But, I mean, not necessarily. He could go try and find his parents, but they're being watched. He could go to school and try to sneak around. Like, what could he be doing to kind of further um, their their mission when he doesn't even really know what the mission is? I thought like um, he, he should go to Hagrid's. That feels pretty good. Yeah, like someone you know for a fact you can trust. Um, or he could have went, couldn't he have gone to his brother's shop? That's a pretty good one. Diagon Alley, you know, but he doesn't have any of the supplies. What do you mean? Um, like he doesn't have the polyjuice. He doesn't have the invisibility cloak. So he'd be straight up Ron Wits, you know, using muggle disguises, <laughs> throwing uh, yeah. glasses on or fake mustache or something. He definitely can't show up in public. He can't really show up back. Yeah, like back he, it feels school. like that would be a red flag and there'd yeah. be Death Eaters kind of keeping an eye out for him. Potentially. they. But it seemed like they really did buy the whole Spattergroy mm -hmm. thing. So... I don't know, but or I keep hoping he he's out there to doing a good. a hippogriff? Or did he see death now? Maybe he could do a... What's a a thestral. Hmm. Has he seen death? Has Ron seen death? I can't remember. It depends how far he was from Moody, if Moody died. Oh. Um, Maybe, Could yeah. he have seen that? He Maybe in the sky, Moody. but that's the only thing I can think of. I don't know if he or, saw no that. Kids, I don't think he saw though? that. I don't... Yeah, that's a great question. I don't I think, don't he, think is. he did. He wasn't there for Cedric. And then Dumbledore, no. No. It would have had to been this sometime in this book that Ron had, had seen death. And oh, I yeah. I don't think that he's seen it. Right. I was just thinking maybe at the end of the last book, but I, I can't remember maybe, yeah. where his part of the battle was and if anyone was killed in that. But either way, I he, could Hippogriff, see him Thestral, Broom. To... Where would he go? Hagrid, and then having Luna help him hmm. get Thestral to find and them. You know, he would or have Hagrid. to go to one of the members of the Order, probably. And another good person to go to would be um, Tonks. Tonks, yeah. Because if he's with Tonks and Lupin, I feel like they actually would be able to work together and do something. I don't know what. And it'd be risky because Lupin is kind of being a little weird right now, but... Maybe, but I, yeah, because how, how would Ron find them again? I just can't quite picture when That's the only thing how. I think is a Thestral can take you where you want to go. So you're thinking of the Thestrals as having um, 
Oh, uh, but they don't have detectives on people? I don't know. Like, it seems like they understand and they can do certain things. And it's the same kind of mystery as owls, maybe. If you say, yeah. hey, owl, go find this person. How do they find them? Yeah. I don't know. It's like a homing pigeon. They just know how to go home. Is that same thing true? Because then a Death Eater could be like, go find Harry Potter and then just follow the owl. So I don't think it's as simple as that. <laughs> um, but what could the Thestral... Wait, that could... Why couldn't that be? Well, because then they would have done it by now, right? <laughs> I mean, and then Voldemort would have sent out a flock of owls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously, a whole flock of them. <laughs> like, that's question. literally what it does. I know, yeah. So, like... It's the just... owls do? Yeah. yeah. kind of. No, they do. But you know what? There's got to be a charm so that prevents that. That's a great thing. When Hermione's setting up the She's whole fences... She's just saying that. So. She, that must be one of them, right? Like, Owl-less to would, hide yourself yeah. from <laughs> owl search. <laughs> because <laughs> otherwise, it would be too simple. Or, like... Or it, it, there would be something about owls that are searching that is more pure. And if they sense that they're being followed, they don't go there because that like violates their code. I'm giving owls a little, little but much then credit, what but they're about worth. the Patronus when it like appeared, Mr. Weasley's Patronus? Oh, you're hmm. right. Now, that came out of nowhere. But did then, it go to the order because he told it to go there? Or did it go to no, Ron I, I, because he told him? I think it went to the person. But we then I was know. thinking, does it relay information back or it's literally just to give a warning? Like, do you even know that it got to the person? That the is a good question. And then does Voldemort have a Patronus? Can he no. cast a Patronus? I don't think Something so. Something happy? Mm. Well, again, or we, we were discussing if it can be done. Yeah. But we know that Dolores Umbridge can do a Patronus. Mm-hmm. We don't like that. But maybe she's more about, pure of heart than we death, give her credit. What about the Death Eaters too? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta stop saying that because it's so bad. But it <laughs> also could just mean that every Death Eater can do a Patronus, but they have no need of it. Uh, but if a Patronus message is cool, like uh, Dumbledore was yeah. sending the message when uh, that was book three, I think. Um, what is they everyone's need- Patronus? That's a, actually an interesting question. But I don't know if I remember all of them. Beaver. What do we know? Huh? Isn't Beaver Hermione? Um, hers no. is an otter. Close. Um, yeah, nice. Yeah, close. way yeah, cuter. Close. No offense, yeah, way cuter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then and Ron's, Ron's is a Jack Russell Terrier. Harry's is a stag. Yeah. Um, John's quizzing himself right now. I know. Well, this is good. This is for trivia. Also. And is we Lupin's? know Tonks is <laughs> a wolf <laughs> now, or a uh, uh, yeah, Tonks or a werewolf. A it, one it's of probably yeah, yeah. Probably werewolf. Um, Dumbledore's was a phoenix. Uh huh. Um, was said. Did we? Maybe it's not. What was, was. Umbridge's? Was that a cat? Or yeah, a, it was a cat. Okay, Umbridge's was a cat. And was somebody's a rabbit? Isn't uh, I think McGonagall Luna's was a rabbit. Also, hmm. does McGonagall have one? Is she a cat also? I don't know if we've seen because that's one of those things that we were kind of wondering. Is your oh, Patronus yeah. the same as your animagus? Yeah, that's a it's an, a fascinating question. <clears throat> I think it can be. It can't be. At this, it it might be either. I don't think mm. anything's confirmed in the book up until this point. So we don't really know what McGonagall is. Up until this weird, point. Because yeah. the Patronus changed for Tonks. <laughs> that means we're going to find Could your Animagus change? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Whoa. We're getting some answers to our questions. It, it does make that. sense that your uh, That's right. Animagus form would kind of be the same as your um, Patronus. But I still don't get we just don't know. Even. Yeah, it's, it's kind of mysterious. Mm. And, uh, it's like your spirit animal. Yeah, kind of. So it would come out and I think it would be both. It would be the same. Oh. Maybe. Yeah. Well, I was just wondering if any, like, how funny would it be if someone was trying to be an animagus and they go through their first transformation transformation, and they're like a whale or an orca and they're just <laughs> flopping around like, shoot, this stinks. Or even just something like that can breathe air, a like a seal. Or You're just like yeah. flopping around a, like a little. A beetle. A beetle, beetle yeah. Yeah, like that kind of Imagine does stink. That, though. But that's but, like no, but that's a good one. It's fitting. But like I, I do have to think that it does take almost like your choice into account a little bit. Like your need for it. Like the sorting Rita, hat where yeah. you'd be like, okay, don't like Rita make becomes me a beetle an because she wants to be a bug and be a, on someone's shoulder while they're giving hot gas, you know? Right, right. Or so, while they're apparating to secret hideouts exactly. so she can spy on them. <laughs> <laughs> you still are on that theory. Well, I'm just still worried because it's a loose end. And if that yeah. if it isn't that, it means there's a chance they're still being tracked. So you're saying so I'm scared. <laughs> I get that reference. There you go. Nice. Um, That's all I'm good for there's tonight. another moment in these books where they take uh, Phineas Nigelis's portrait 
and they are actually using it as company. And it says they were oh, yeah, spending many weird. evenings in near silence, and Hermione took to bringing out Phineas Nigellus's portrait and propping it in a chair, as though he might fill part of the gaping hole left by Ron's departure. Indeed, Phineas Nigellus inadvertently emphasized this fact by slipping in leading questions, which is, comes comes later. Leading questions about Harry and Hermione's whereabouts. So that's why they like shut him up and said, This is, we can't do this anymore because he's like trying to figure out where we are. Yeah. But is Hermione actually crazy to do this to like set up yes. this, this, uh, portrait in an empty chair just for company? <laughs> I know that you're pointing at something like this in your book. So you should talk. <laughs> um, no, I'm just tapping it for the fun of it. It had nothing to do with this. Oh. But, wow. You know, it seemed very dangerous to me. I was trying to think of what Ron would say. He has some funny one-liners about her being nuts. But I felt like Hermione was a little a little off her rocker in this case. Because imagine Phineas is actually bad. Like he's listening to Snape if Snape gives him commands. Did he tell Snape what's going on? Does Snape know? And now Snape's sitting in the office like, all right, you know, try and get back there next chance you get. And when you're there... I want you to, I'm just thinking of things that could be used to like help narrow down their location because so asking Snape questions is, is one thing. Them. So you think Snape yeah. is actually up to this? Wow, that's fascinating. Well, because then I'm just thinking, well, what if, my first thought was things that make noise. Like you can have those, um, what if the painting has some way of doing a proximity thing or it can feel if there's another painting nearby. And now you've got all these death eaters that are flying around. Mm. What if they're doing little subsonic whistles or something else that like could be heard or be like, Oh, I heard it this time. It was kind of (laughs) nearby or whatever. (laughs) I'm just thinking it's dangerous to let someone potentially evil into your tent. Yeah. And you could simplify it like that. (laughs) But they just go and I just say (laughs) I but, look at you and you're like, but, what the heck are they talking about? No, no, but Jen, isn't it dangerous? You got to admit, it's sure, pretty dangerous. Sure, so dangerous. Because <laughs> what information could they hope to find from Phineas? You have to ask yourself, who does Phineas is. care about? <laughs> Them? Snape? Whose side is he on? You're letting a stranger into the tent. Dangerous. <laughs> What'd you say? He said who? And she said cares. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was funny. in the midst of his whole ramble. It is actually wild. Like she does have lapses there in her judgment for certain things. Um and this is definitely seems she's like allowed one to have a little oh, relaxation agreed. of the yeah. brain because she's always thinking for three people. <laughs> yeah, she's thinking for three people, and she has a moment of loneliness here, which is like a true, yeah, truly sad thing. Like the person that she really loved kind of abandoned her, which is really tragic. And she's stuck with Harry, who she. I think I missed that. Know. I thought that he was like coming back to give information about Snape. Hmm. So you kind of trust him. You're thinking Phineas no, no, is. No, I don't know what was. Oh. I don't know what was said in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little foggy to you. Is, that's not what happened. He never came back to the painting? Well, he, he you know, Phineas is coming back every once in a while. It's hard to tell how many times, but it sounds like a few. In my head, I read it like three or four times. It was like, yeah, like, you know, once a week or something, He they'd prop the painting up and he would actually come back and they would do the thing where he, he has to put the blindfold on, you know. And, and that's fine, but it just felt a little fishy um, if he's listening for rain on the roof and then they know yeah, oh, right. it's an area where there's rain and they could do some like fiendish little things. But why would he want to give information to Snape? But that's what I'm saying. Maybe he wouldn't, but if there's even a 5% chance, is it worth the yeah. risk? He and does I seem think very it's more proud of Snape. That. He's going and talking yeah. about how this is the first Slytherin since me to be headmaster. He's, he's oh. like, he can't get over a Snape. He's and I think he has to. If Snape's in the office, to me that means he's the official headmaster, mm-hmm. and the portraits have to listen to him. Yeah, so because they're all in service, they don't have a choice. Mm-hmm. I think literally Dumbledore's portrait has to listen to Snape right now. Interesting, and and that's what I'm saying. They're, like to an extent, like they they, they have free will, but there's yeah. a, still there's a code. There's yeah. guilt. There's like because Dumbledore would do stuff, and Phineas and Jell also put his no, I mean, do they like have nose free up in the will? air. So. Yeah, wait, what? They have free will. Dobby is free. Um, yeah, they have free will. I think all of the things have free will. <laughs> kind of. Like, even the sorting hat. I think it wrote that song because it likes to. Yeah. Maybe it didn't it used to, but it got bored year. sitting on a shelf for 
364 days a year. And so I started writing music to pass the time. And then it, it got to have a little show along with its sorting, you know, thing. Maybe that's where the sword is. Mm. In it, it was in there, wasn't it, when he took mm-hmm. it out? Did the sorting hat drop to Harry and he took it out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I kind of forgot about that. Oh. Yeah, the Chamber of Secrets. He, the, the well, Fox dropped, <laughs> yeah, Fox dropped the hat and Harry pulled the sword out of the sorting hat. Hmm. Maybe they need the hat. Maybe Fox has the sword. Hmm. Interesting. Like Fox took it when it left after the lament. Maybe. How do you get Fox told back? Fox to go put it somewhere. Ooh, I like that. But where would it be though? I don't know. I'm just <laughs> no, trying to good. give you Follow some this info. lead. <laughs> Let's pull this thread until it unravels the sweater. Um, <laughs> until we're here till How, tomorrow yeah. morning. <laughs> yeah. How about this on the gravestones? Because I want to talk about the gravestones for a bit. It says this. Or it could be there. Hmm? In the graves. Ooh, yeah. Because it could be under says. one of the graves. There's there's um a little mark on one of them that I want to talk about. Um, it says, oh, apparently yeah. she had not been listening to him. She leaned forward and held out the tails of Beetle the Bard. Look at that symbol. And this actually isn't on the grave, sorry. This is through the, the, the oh, uh, yeah, tails yeah, of Beetle yeah. the Bard. Um, she said, pointing to the top of the page, above what Harry assumed was the title of the story, being unable to read runes, he could not be sure. There was a picture of what looked like a triangular eye. Its pupil crossed with a vertical line. I never took ancient runes, Hermione. I know that. But it isn't a rune, and it's not in the syllabary either. All along, I thought it was a picture of an eye, but I don't think it is. It's been inked in. Look, somebody's drawn it there. It it isn't really a part of the book. Think, have you ever seen it before? No. No, wait a moment. Here, you look closer. Isn't it the same symbol Luna's dad is wearing around his neck? Well, that's what I thought, too. Then it's Grindelwald's mark. What does that all mean for the story? (laughs) This little mark has been inked in. To this book and it's Grindelwald's mark. Dumbledore has something to do with it because he gave Hermione that book for a reason hmm. and maybe they're friends or enemies. Well, there was a picture of them together. I thought you're real set on that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How do they find more information here? Crumb? Do they go to Durmstrang? No, I'm wondering if sh- if they should look through the book to see if that symbol is like on other letters or something, and then you could spell out something, or it's a map or some well, sort of. Here's another question: Do they find this symbol on one of the tombstones? I thought they did. Is that the actual symbol? Because Harry he goes through it real quick. This is what happens. It says here, cried Hermione a few moments later out of the darkness. Oh no, sorry, I thought I said Potter. She was rubbing at a crumbling mossy stone. Um, gazing down at a little frown on her face. Harry, come back a moment. He did not want to be sidetracked and only grudgingly made his way back through the snow toward her. What? Look at this. The grave was extremely old, weathered, so that Harry could hardly make out the name. Hermione showed him the symbol beneath it. Harry, that's the mark in the book. And then Harry kind of moves on. That was dumb. Hmm. He's looking for his parents. He's dead set on finding his parents' grave. Yeah, he was very distracted. He lost sight of it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Is that Um, the same mark? Hermione seems convinced of it. Yeah, but they couldn't read anything. Even if it, even if they looked at it, it sounded like it was so ruined they wouldn't have been able to read. She made out. It says Ignotus. Ignotus. Yeah. Wait, what? Ignotus. Did you have that in your? Character. I already looked. <laughs> it's not in there. Um, and we have to assume that it's like really, really faint. So it could be she's even misreading this or it's something else. Yeah. Right in the mic. Nice. Um, <laughs> it wasn't even out. It was an internal. It was in. Oh, okay, so. nice. Um, I'm glad everyone heard it. Sorry. Um, so I don't know if we know this person. I don't think so. Not based on that. But we could find out later that it's. Oh, it Is wasn't that his first it name? Was, What's his name? His or her. No, Grindelwald. First. Or oh, What's that's a name? great point. We don't know the first name. It literally could be Grindelwald's grave. Mm. But what we are know the Grindelwald's name, though. We know Grindelwald's first and last name. We do? Yeah. Hmm. Gellert Grindelwald. What? Oh, nice, nice. Gellert Grindelwald. With a G. Gellert. With Gellert. a G, yeah. I believe that was on the, on the chocolate frog card. 
Oh, nice. It might have just been his last name, but we know his we know his name is Geller. Okay, Geller. nice. Yeah. Um that it did come up at some point as you're saying it. I don't think it was the chocolate car, a chocolate frog, yeah. but it sounds a little familiar. I don't remember if I updated my character list, but it might what have been if, Elpheus's, Elpheus what if Ron Jones? was there oh, yeah, and he okay. did the Deluminator Ooh, and it that's glowed? What I'm, I'm like, they've got a or be- something. I know. The dude who made the first golden snitch is buried here. Bring that snitch out and try and open some clothes. You know what I mean? Um, open where the clothes. Well, it's just weird because and then it's the sword's in there. It's the clothes Maybe. of his life. The first snitch man. I don't know. It just feels like there's a lot here and even the where your treasure is I there your like, heart will be i'm like is this like because that's the other line i want to discuss is, is harry's heart here this is the mo- most heart we've ever seen out of yep. harry at this grave i'm like does that mean the treasure is at your parents grave because again this is like it feels like there's more here and by the end of this chapter <laughs> imagine harry starts digging up the grave exhuming his parents dead oof, parents body that's pretty rough just but for a sword could there be something more like the treasure is more of like you're saying something to be discovered like unlocked uh, like a code mm-hmm. or like something with the deluminator like some other kind of combination of things to reveal something here um or maybe the book she's reading it wrong maybe there's codes in there she doesn't even know how would she do it with um, I'm just wondering if that su- if that symbols on certain pages or something. Yeah, yeah, besides like besides just that one. That is a good. She point. only seemed to notice it once. Mm. And she needs She's to do a little more a digging. While. Like, yeah, did Dumbledore give could her the be book a map? just so that she could see the symbol on one page? Like the whole book's a red herring, and it's really just about a symbol. Or does the symbol mean something in the book? Like you said, are there multiple pages with the symbol that she's got to like focus on or is the symbol a clue in like how to read deeper into like a hidden message or something? Mm. It it just feels hard to tell. Um, We don't have a lot of info, but it feels pretty useful and it feels like like something they should have brought up earlier. Yeah. They have a lot of time to kill. I, I feel like Hermione should know this book. Or what if the book... Right I think she does. It was like so? glow in the dark in a way where like you go... Like, what if the deluminator hmm. was supposed to go with the, the book? book? The deluminator. And is the snitch a part of this equation? Sure. <laughs> Add it. Because hmm. what if you have to go somewhere dark and then he does the deluminator to make it extra dark? And then with that, it lightens up pages. I mean, it's worth book. trying. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm kind of assuming they already tried certain things, but we didn't It'll, hear any discussion about it. Hmm. Yeah. So maybe not. So little glow and dark and glow and dark things in the book that'd be interesting. Harry, that's the mark in the book. Hmm. Mm-hmm. She's convinced of it, and Hermione has like really studied this. But there's the mark on the grave or the quotation on um, Kendra and Ariana's grave, and Harry's convinced that it's Dumbledore. He said it, sh- it surely has to be the oldest. He says the quote is where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So is this a clue or is this just like you know? A nice little thing to put on a grave. I wrote a clue exclamation point next to it, so I'm definitely thinking it's a clue. <laughs> um, even if it isn't a clue directly, it's at least a clue into Dumbledore's mindset. Yeah. And so even if Dumbledore wasn't writing that inscription saying... Someday somebody's going to need this as a clue or I'm going to hide something really important where where one's heart might be. It it still gives us like the idea of maybe it's not Harry's heart we're talking about. Maybe it's Dumbledore's where Dumbledore's heart is, is where the treasure is. Where's Dumbledore's heart at these graves? Interesting. Yeah. At his childhood home at. Well, where his Aberforth physical lives, or like where his... where yeah where Dumbledore's own grave where <laughs> his heart is or is has his heart always been at Hogwarts hmm. and this is just a way of saying Dumbledore is going to hide treasure at Hogwarts the safest place where his heart has always been so there's treasure at Hogwarts like there's treasure where the heart of Dumbledore is in the grave of Dumbledore <laughs> like literally could actually be in the grave which wouldn't be terrible um, imagine we were Harry right now like this Sorry. gives you no answer. Yeah, absolutely nothing. No. You're gonna start just digging up bodies. Imagine but that. what we do know is he needs to find more about this symbol. And we're older than him. 
and we don't even know what to do. Exactly. But we're not the chosen ones. <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't even the chosen one. It was his wand. Mm. <laughs> That's now broken. How about the other words on the Harry's parents' gravestones? It says this. The headstone was only two rows behind Kendra and Ariana's. It was made of white marble, just like Dumbledore's tomb. Oof. And this made it easy to read, as it seemed to shine in the dark. Harry did not need to kneel or even approach very close to make out the words engraved upon it. James Potter, born 27 March 1960, died October 31st, 1981. Lily Potter, born January 30th, 1960, died October 31st, 1981. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. What does that quote mean for this? Why and who put that on the on the stone? What does that, that actually mean? Hmm. He always talks about that though, didn't he? Like death not being the final. He he did make a comment. I think it was to Harry about Voldemort. Or maybe it was to Voldemort during that or battle. Like that in, death's uh, okay or something like that. Like, yeah, like something about death not being as bad or as crazy or as like. And like love is better than all of that. He was saying Voldemort thinks death is like the worst thing ever. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't fully understand yeah. death. But I forget what he was saying exactly. I mean, he says, for the well-organized mind, uh, death is yeah. but the next great adventure. Uh, yeah, exactly. Mm. <laughs> so death is the next great adventure, but it's also the last enemy that shall be destroyed. Mm. Like Dumbledore is saying it's an adventure to a well-organized well mind. But the Dumbledore so wrote how is this. it the enemy? Yeah, because I was thinking That's Dumbledore wrote this, but now I'm like, maybe he didn't. But then if, he, if Dumbledore didn't, who did? Petunia mm, like wow. who else would have the right to like put the inscription yeah. on there just a random stone. person at the church is by a church graveyard this is a passage yeah. of the bible so it could just be a random person like a random pastor mm. or something like that or the whoever right. runs the church or is it the kind of thing that would be in their will yeah right that it would be determined already like yeah. hey when we die this is where we're going to be buried we own this yeah. plot and this is what it's going to say the last like enemy. Lupin could have done it because Sirius is in prison probably at that point, so he probably couldn't have done it. But Lupin maybe could have done this. Hmm. Um, yeah, you just don't know who put this inscription there. Yeah. But what does it actually mean for the story? Is this because Harry has this repulsion? He's like, isn't this a Death Eater idea? Yeah, which is fair. That was yeah. my first thought too. Death eating question mark. Yeah. Um. So. Um, it means, you know, living beyond death, living after death. It doesn't mean defeating death in the way death eaters mean it. So it, it just saying there's an afterlife, I guess, if it's weird to call it an enemy, though, it doesn't feel like the same tone as what Dumbledore says when he talks about death. It could be mm. the enemy and how you perceive it. Mm. Yeah. Like, I feel like there's two different perspectives going on. And I, like, I, yeah, you've mentioned that before, right? With like how they how the know. Death Eaters perceive death versus how Dumbledore approaches death. I Have I talked about it? It's in my head right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Keep say going. it. Yeah. I, uh, I'm trying to piece it together because it's all how you look at it. Like, who was it? Dumbledore that said death is but the next yeah. adventure. Like, he's looking at it like there. He believes in something after life, and Voldemort, his greatest achievement is living forever here. Mm -hmm. So like where he is hmm. so death is the greatest enemy for him so i don't really know where i'm going with this yeah. but it's just like the two different perspectives of how you perceive it i'm also paralleling it on a spiritual level mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so like that's where my mind is going hmm. i don't know i don't really have much ground to stand on but it's no just, no i know for what me mean. it's like the perspectives of how you're looking at it and how hmm. you're living your life and what you're living your life for that's going to dictate how you perceive death because Hermione mm. even says that he's, he's, she says to justify it, it's not really talking about a Death Eater idea. It's talking about life after death, like yeah. living after you, you die. Because even saying it's a Death Eater idea, it could be the same concept. It's all at the lens that you're looking at it yeah, through. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like they could be looking at it through totally yep. different lenses. Yeah. I don't know. There's my input for the night. So <laughs> like even with that, do you think that... Um, <sighs> I don't know how to, this is like a, maybe a, a meta question for this series. 
if let's say Dumbledore wrote this, is this a clue for them? Let's say Lupin wrote this. Is this a clue for them? Let's say anybody, anybody really wrote this. Is this like a clue for them? Or is, if it's Petunia, it's probably like, you know, she's pissed off that her sister died or something. And she just like wants death to be defeated. Yeah. But let's say any other wizard wrote this. Is this a clue for them to say like, you need to now defeat death Harry in order to defeat Voldemort? You know, it does feel that way. Um kind of yeah like but i can't tell if it, if it's whose death it's talking about like is this um voldemort's mm. like he's the one that views death as the enemy and he's trying to tether himself to earth so you have to like is it but it's so basic it can't be as simple as that just like it has to mean more than just like a vague encouragement about like keep fighting voldemort you know mm. i think it has to mean more we don't have a lot to go on. I'm taking this as a clue, but it just doesn't mean anything to us yet. Um, so I'm thinking at some point it will click, but because they don't have much to go on right now, they're kind of looking for the sword. They know where your treasure is there. Your heart will be also. And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Mm. And these are all like, Oh, and the symbol that that they're looking for. These are all things they're kind of trying to figure out. So I'm saying write that down and, and keep that in mind because it could mean something. I just don't know what yet, if if anything. Yeah. There's a, there's a really good quote in Game of Thrones <laughs> that uh, I forgot who says this. Um, oh, it says Beric Dondarrion. Dondarrion. Death is the enemy. The enemy always wins. We still need to fight it. I think that kind of parallels huh. us a little bit too. I think it's a good like, yeah, little that's quote interesting. for this. That they're maybe fighting against death, which maybe Voldemort is being perceived as death here. It's just a fascinating, fascinating idea, I think. Hmm. Yeah. Anything else in these chapters? There is a lot in this chapter, but anything else before we go on to Bethilda's secrets? Um, I was just trying to think if there was anything... Um weird about the the fact that they could barely make out the gravestone with mm. the symbol on it if every other gravestone here is like crisp and easy to read yeah and even just in general <clears throat> gravestones last a long time yeah there's a gravestone at the corner of our street and some of these you can read them back to like the 1800s mm -hmm. easily um and the older ones are, are early 1800s late 1700s those are like the ones where you're like oh i can hardly read it so if it's scratched out and you can't even make out a name Especially and this mark is on it. Yeah, but the, and there's the mark. I'm like, what does this mean in terms of the history of that mark? And is it in this town now? Mm. Because I started to associate the mark with um far away places with mm. Grigorovich and everything far away. But now I'm like, okay, maybe it has roots here. So what does um, that mean? Does that mean that Grindelwald adopted this mark for some reason? Or yeah, I'm, or I'm, he took it as like a new symbol for Well, what I'm actually kind of wondering is the reason we're thinking it's grindelwald's is only from crumb is it even grindelwald's at all or did crumb mm -hmm. just misunderstand or was it someone else who was up at Durmstrang? and i don't know like we're hearing everything third hand so there could be miscommunications um it's hard to tell but maybe um what i'm saying is find crumb and find uh xenophilius mm. because those are the two people that know about this mark yeah right hey uh hey xl you know what's well, going on with yeah. the, the mark you were wearing on that gold chain let's uh so. yeah his, his rap name um <laughs> so like what's uh what's the deal can you tell us about this because he, he he loves these like cultural foreign things and yeah. you know unique stuff so i'd say he's one of the best sources and as the writer the quibbler that the goblins and their little fire were saying is the really only the real source of information right now I'm like, head to that dude. He's got info. He's he's probably running stuff. Yeah. Um. So yeah, him or Crumb, I think you could get to them without raising red flags. So if Grin if Grindelwald is not the origin of this thing, what is the actual origin of this mark then? If this Godric is Gryffindor, mm. it, because it's it's in Godric's Hollow. It's the oldest gravestone that we like interacted with. Mm. So I don't know who this dude is. It can't the gravestone can't be that old. Or maybe wizards do better things to their gravestones because our muggle gravestones can last hundreds of years. Yeah. So maybe they've got something that makes it even better. And this yeah, actually this is a thousand, thousand years old, yeah. but 
it, it could just be something else, some other like relative of Godric Gryffindor. Um, or maybe it can last a thousand years. We got uh, yeah. obelisks from Egypt that yeah. have carvings <laughs> sitting yeah. in uh, just the open air forever. We used to have that one in New York City and then it, they took it away because it was starting to get weathered. Oh, really? Is that yeah. true? I didn't even know that. Yeah. The, uh, it was actually crazy. It was right outside the Met. Yeah, yeah, right behind um, it. And they had to take it down because it wasn't used to this climate. That it was is getting funny because that's literally what I was yeah. thinking of. Because there's one in London too and there's one yeah. in Paris. And they're just outside just yeah. getting weathered and they still last. So maybe it's possible this actually is a relative of Godric Gryffindor. Hmm. Um, but we don't know who that would be. But we only know his first name. So this could be this could be Godric Gryffindor's dad or son hmm. or like it could be a relative. But we've never seen it before. And what's it doing up at Durmstrang? Hmm. And how did Grindelwald take over this symbol if it is something like that? Hmm. Um, or did Dumbledore make it up? Is this a Dumbledore symbol? But why have yeah. we never seen it there? It seems older than all of them, to be honest. And whatever happened to Crockpot? <laughs> I thought he was coming back for sure. <laughs> He's the other Durmstrang loose end that yeah, were like, he could shoot. still pop up. Back in the day, he was he was boys with Snape. And now we have to wonder, was he friends with Snape when Snape was pretending to be good? Hmm. Or was he friends with Snape from before that? And they were like scheming together when they were both here for the Triwizard oh, Tournament. I forgot about him. Yeah. And then all we know is he died by himself up in the middle of nowhere in a shack or something. Yeah, right. And I'm like, and that's it. A little shady. Yeah, there it could just be something feels else weird. going on there. So he's one of the only connections we have to Durmstrang. Yeah. Is Grigorovich, Crumb. And Crockpot. And Crockpot, yeah. And Grindelwald. So it just, there's mm, a lot I of know. loose ends. There's something there. But one of the last lines in this chapter, which is terribly tragic, is this. Um, but they were not living, Harry thought. They were gone. The empty words could not disguise the fact that his parents' moldering remains lay beneath the snow and stone, indifferent, unknowing. And tears came before he could stop them, boiling hot, then instantly freezing on his face. And what was the point in wiping them off or pretending? He let them fall. His lips pressed hard together, looking down at the thick snow hiding from his eyes, the place where the last of Lily and James lay. Bones now, surely, or dust, not knowing or caring that their living son stood so near, his heart still beating, alive because of this, their sacrifice, and close to wishing at this moment that he was sleeping under the snow with them. That is a tragic line. Is Harry kind of like, uh, what is Harry experiencing here? Is he, is he really depressed? Maybe in ways he never realized before, mm -hmm. or like this is, this is the, the conclusion to his emotional arc from the beginning of book one, you know, like I feel like this is resolving some of the emotions he's been bottling up for his mm. whole life. Yeah. So that's interesting. I don't think he even knows why he's feeling all these yeah, feelings. For real. Yeah, honestly. But I, I, sometimes they I all know. just come out at a moment that you really don't expect. And then yeah. you're like, what the heck am I feeling? What is, the, what is going on? What am I doing? Why am I crying? Yeah. It's, uh, it's like deeper. It's more subconscious. Yeah. Um, but it's good. Um, I think I said this before on the podcast, but I, someone that I, I followed um, a little a while on social media, they, they made a um, a journal of every time they cried because they felt like every time they cried, they became a new person. And I yeah, yeah, yeah. so right. great. I love that. Um, and I don't do that, but I'm like, oh, it'd be kind of fun to do that. I feel like every time you like have a good cry, sometimes you just don't even know what it's from um, mm. or like you don't know why this thing made you cry so much, but it's like. You kind of are reborn and I feel like Harry can like, he does show maturity in the next chapter, at least some aspects of maturity, some none. So let's go to the next chapter unless you want to talk about anything else in 16. Let's do it. All right. Bethilda's secret. What is Bethilda's secret? She's not Bethilda. <laughs> <laughs> she's dead and snake is living in her body. Ew. Mm -hmm. It's disgusting. So creepy. So creepy. Ew. Um, what do you guys think of all the monuments to the Potters? There's the one little monument, and then they yeah, go to the house. Yeah, quite a few. Yeah. You're right. Their graves are there, the monument, yeah. another one at the house. It's a lot, but it's good. But it also made me a little annoyed at Dumbledore. 
you never brought Harry here. I know, I know. I was like, I show him. That is like, perfect. Because then the same emotional journey he was able to kind of conclude could have happened earlier. And like, who else is visiting this thing? But Harry isn't. He's not seeing his own parents' graves. But maybe we blame Harry and say, you never asked. You never like yeah. wanted to visit. You never like dug deep. Maybe he wasn't ready. Maybe he was purposefully leaving that as like, a, I don't care. I don't need to see that. Um even at the end of this next chapter, I think they're like, we never need to go back to Godric's Hollow again. At least we like ruled that out. I'm like, mm, yeah, I don't think so, though. Um, there's still quite a bit going on there that I feel like we don't mm. we didn't conclude. Um, and it might occur to them later, but um, yeah, it does feel funny. Lots yeah. of monuments. I know. It is kind of cute, though. Like Harry gets like he likes it because. You know, there's like little encouraging notes for him and Hermione's like, I oh, they shouldn't have, you know, done this. And Harry thinks it's cool. Mm. But they like wrote on it and said like, we're with you, Harry. And yeah, you're right. You're right. It's kind of cute. He's, he's like, getting to also see them as like statues. Mm. True. Yeah. He's never really seen them. Yeah. Like a, a likeness Besides of his parents. Photographs. And the fact that he sees the like the graffiti as support and like people who love him. I think that's pretty cool. Mm. Um worth reading all that graffiti too i'm like messages hiding in the graffiti <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's in there dumbledore is graffiti in one little corner. <laughs> yeah. um there is another one here that i want to talk about it says what is uh was it possible that she had been waiting for them all these long months that dumbledore had told her to wait and that harry would come in the end was it not likely that she that it was she who had moved in the shadows in the graveyard and to follow them to the spot? Even her ability to sense them suggested Dumbledore-ish power that he had never encountered before. What would you have done in that situation? Like, were they stupid to follow her? Yes and no. Yeah. <laughs> mm. They got me. I was mm. like, yeah, trust her. Run along. <laughs> I didn't even hesitate. I was like, yeah, that was a great I, idea. I was struggling with that too. Did yeah. you did you view it as like a bad thing? Not at first. Mm. But it was weird when she they weren't taught when she wasn't talking. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was weird. And there's this one little weird moment too where uh she says something from the other room and Hermione jumps and Harry's like, oh, it's okay, let's keep going. I think she says like come here or something like that. Oh, it sounded like a snake. It sounded like a snake. So Hermione jumps, saying, what the heck is that? Oh, wow. Harry I didn't even put that together. Room. Yeah. It's oh. creepy. You know, as soon as it smelled bad, that put me on edge. <laughs> where I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, I, can you trust someone that doesn't smell good? Um, no, it just felt like something felt off at that point because I'm like, that's not what I picture her being like. Mm. But then it's also funny, like, she's batty. So how long has she been a snake now that people are like, you know, saying she's batty? And when she's being interviewed, supposedly interviewed, um, for information, I think from Rita Skeeter, right? Mm. Was she already a snake? Was Voldemort taking her over to do the interview? Was it like different? I don't know. It's just weird. Um, but the rumor is out there that she was batty. And now it might have been not even her. I know. So it's weird. Yeah, Rita's source is a snake. Rita can speak parcel tongue. Interesting. It kind of well, that's what I'm saying. It's like it it makes me think Rita is bad. Yeah. Um, not actually, because I still kind of want her to be good. Yeah. But I was thinking either under the Imperius or something else, because it just means that the story would have been very influenced by Voldemort one way or another. Yeah, for sure. Then this is uh even one of Jen's questions that she's convinced on, but the dust vanished from the photographs, and you saw at once that half a dozen were missing from their largest and most ornate frames. He wondered whether Bethilda or somebody else had removed them. Then the sight of a photographer near the back of the collection caught his eye, and he snatched it up. It was the golden-haired, merry-faced thief, the young man who had perched on Grigorovich's windowsill, smiling lazily up at Harry out of the silver frame. And then it came to Harry instantly, where he had seen the boy before, in the life and lives of Albus Dumbledore, arm-in-arm arm with a teenage Dumbledore. And that must be where all the missing photographs were in Rita's book. So who is this? Jen's pretty convinced that it's Grindelwald, but... It could be. he He's one of the three people it could be to me. It would have to be Aberforth, Grindelwald, or... Um, I keep forgetting, Elpheus Doge. Mm. It, it would have to be one of those three. And the easiest one would be Elpheus. Mm. Harry already knows him. 
and we could just go ask him questions and say, you yeah. stole a thing. What's going on? You know, Aberforth, we've never met him unless he was that short wizard that spoke at Dumbledore's funeral, but we never got a confirmation. Mm -hmm. And then I think Harry would have recognized him. Um, but it feels weird if it's Grindelwald starting to make sense. Yeah. I kind of like the theory because there is something about like this that Voldemort looks into Gregorovich's mind. Gregorovich has this vision. That's this person's leaping out of the window. Still. So Voldemort seems like he's after this person next. Hmm. So is it Aberforth? Is it Elpheus? Is it Grindelwald? Is it someone else? Is it Crackpot? Maybe Crackpot dyed his hair blonde. And was to be good, fair. Yeah. Like he, he could potentially, I thought of um, him as being, maybe too young because arm in arm teenage Dumbledore means he'd have to be like, you know, getting, getting pretty old, like roughly Dumbledore's age. And I didn't think of, um, crock pot as being that old. Um, I can't even think of his real name. I call him crock pot. So much. <laughs> Karkarov. Karkarov. <laughs> um, and, uh, so oh, man, I, j I just don't know. Yeah. It's weird. It is weird, yeah. Did it say what color hair Elpheus had? Maybe. Mm -mm. I, don't I, mean, I don't think it did. But mm. <laughs> start piecing things together. But he's older now anyway, so yeah. maybe it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. Um, but we thought of Grindelwald as being dead. And so how could he not be? How could they find him now? Yeah. Unless it's his grave. I don't know. Wait, you think of who is that? A Grindelwald. Oh. Like when Dumbledore defeated him, I thought of mm. the defeat as being a death defeat. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe he was an Askaban. Maybe he escaped when everyone else did. Maybe something else is going on. Uh, I don't know. So maybe it's all the uh, the grave stuff going on. Maybe he is buried and there's like a treasure in his grave or something like that. Yeah. Yep. Um, but like we said, there's more to the story of what actually happened with the whole Grindelwald battle. Mm. Um we just don't know how much more, but if they were friends as teenagers, then it seems like there's a lot more to that story. <laughs> um, where if it was Aberforth or Elpheus, we'd kind of say, all right, that makes sense. But mm. now we just have to go find them, which would be is, cool. Um, <clears throat> recall your memories from like all the books is ha what was the creepiest chapter for you? What, is this the creepiest chapter? What about the cave? Did, did that verge on being creepier than this? What was like the creepiest chapter for you guys in your memory? with Frank sneaking up to the big house. That was uh, yeah. pretty creepy. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. That was pretty. And for me, maybe I'm picturing the movie too, but the maze at the end of the Triwizard Tournament, the hedges, all of that, that felt really creepy to me. So I would say those feel like the creepy moments. Um, but I'm trying to think if there was anything else really creepy. Well, yeah, when they find out that Moody is not Moody. Mm. Yeah, that that was like that was creepy. creepy and a skeevy kind of like, yeah. oh, yikes. Um, this chapter just has like horror movie vibes to it, though. But yeah, this was the yeah. way creepier than anything else. This was like Ew, Stephen yeah. King stuff. Yeah. yeah, someone literally just said that on chat that she hired Stephen King to write this chapter. You <laughs> yeah, know? It's like she probably so consulted gross. him, you know? I know. Um, yeah, because just like there was gore involved, which we hadn't seen like this. Like, just like a snake coming out of her neck. It was just like, oh, what the? Yeah. Like now you're picturing a decapitated person, the whole thing. It just felt like this was your dusty, smelly, gross. Like, <laughs> yeah. the whole thing. Like, they're just like, stepping this is, on ugh. dust and they can actually hear it. That's like when yes. you know you need to clean. <laughs> yes. It's so like. <laughs> when you're ugh. stepping in your apartment or your house and it's actually making noises other than the floorboards <laughs> creaking. It's the actual dust <laughs> crunching. It reminds me of when I'm trespassed at like abandoned factories and yeah. you, there's like pigeons have taken over yeah. and you go upstairs and there's layers of poop <laughs> just like pigeon uh, poop you have, you uh, literally yeah, inches yeah. thick that's as you gross. like go up and you're stepping on it and whatever it's hard and crunchy <laughs> and that's what i'm picturing just like dust and ugh. yeah it is a gross place but i think this was creepier was this creepier to you jen yep nice. because there <laughs> thank you <laughs> all right there's this uh uh, a little creepy note too where it says then she closed her eyes and several things happened at once Harry's scar prickled painfully the horcrux twitched so that the front of his sweater actually moved the dark uh, the dark what is this word feeded room dissolved momentarily 
He felt a leap of joy and spoke in a high, cold voice. Hold him. Which is like his vision of Voldemort, which is just creepy. Um, but then there's a few other things that happen. Um, and I don't have a ton more questions on this chapter, but this one is a really interesting one. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that happens with the vision that Harry gets of like the initial of his parents dying. And we'll talk about that in a second, but this mm. is another, there's a few here it says, and his scream was Harry's scream. His pain was Harry's pain. Um, that it could happen here where it had happened before here within sight of that house where he had come so close to knowing what it was to die, to die. The pain was so terrible, ripped from his body. But if he had no body, why did he, why did his head hurt so badly? If he was dead, how could he feel so unbearably? Um, how could he feel so unbearable? Didn't pain cease with death? Didn't it go? And then later he forced the door open cast aside the chairs and boxes hastily piled against um piled against it one one with a uh, with one lazy wave of his wand and there she stood a child in her arms at the sight of him she dropped her son into the crib behind her and threw her arms wide as if this would help as if shielding him from the sights so from uh shielding him from sight he hoped that hoped to be chosen instead not harry not Harry, please not Harry. Stand aside, you silly girl. Stand aside now. Not Harry, please, no. Take me, kill me instead. This is my last warning. Not Harry, please, have mercy, have mercy. Not Harry, not Harry, please, I'll do anything. Stand aside, stand aside, girl. He could have forced her way, he could have forced her away from the crib, but it seemed more prudent to finish them all. I'm going to read another line in a second, but um, what do you think... Um, of the whole like narrative that we actually got of this, of this like murder. Hmm. Is there any like clues in there that are going to help us with the story or is it just like a sad retelling of the story again? Well, we got more information than we've ever gotten. Hmm. Um, well, for one, we know that this is confirming Voldemort was on a mission for Harry it seems like that was the goal the whole time. Mm. And it kind of feels like the Potters knew it too. And again, we're thinking back to the prophecy and Voldemort um, wanting to like take out anyone that could potentially overthrow him or kill him. But it just feels, I don't know. It feels more personal now. Now we're yeah. like, what was the motivation? Was there more? Well, the, there's know. weird motivation for this too. He instantly kills James. Yep. Why does he say just step aside to Lily? And then it even felt like he was having almost like a debate. Like, oh, it felt prudent to finish them all. Yeah. Like, almost like, yeah, just, well, just in case might I as might well, as well. Yeah. Like almost like he, he was ready to spare her if he could have. Yeah. And then didn't. So it feels very strange. Um, I'm not sure. I feel like if there is more in here, I don't know when we're going to realize that it's I know, here. Yeah, yeah. It's hiding. But I'm like, I'm reading it like, oh, I don't know. I know. Because he says that, I think he says that in the very first book. He says something like, your mother needn't have died. Something along those lines. Hmm. Why is that the case? Is there something like embedded in there? Why would he want to spare the mother? Yeah. That's of his mom. Voldemort's he learned mom? about his mom. Hmm? Yeah, because he didn't he learn a little bit about his mom? Or no? So you were thinking there might actually be some empathy in there. Like where he's... Well, not empathy, because if he's killing yeah, Harry, then... Know. But it, it's just weird because he, he goes into this her. house and has no thought about not killing James, James. at all. Like, And it's sad, too, because James doesn't even have a wand. Like You mentioned that during the live read. Like... like put up a fight a little bit like the first thing you need yep. to do is go get your wand that's like the best line of defense that you have but he kills him immediately and mm. then just like walks after lily and then he tells her to step like does that just seems outside of the yep. character of Voldemort? he's taking extra time to yeah. like step aside step yeah. aside like why that doesn't make sense no you're right it, it definitely doesn't it just uh can't quite connect it i think it's a potter thing I think it's like, they're always saying the Potters mm. and it's the male line. I think it's like, he's trying to eliminate the Potters. 
it feels like that's like a thing. And that's why we've maybe why we've never heard about Harry's grandparents mm. or anything else. It just feels weird. But um, yet again, I don't even want to keep, this is another weird point, but she is muggle born. I feel like she would be prime killing. Mm. Like he would relish in killing her because she's muggle born. That's like right. his whole thing. He wants to eradicate yeah, yeah, yeah. muggle borns from the school, you know? So the fact that he doesn't is just weird. It is. It is very weird. Um, I'd speculated before, and I'm just trying to think if there's any other way they could be connected. Mm. If there's any way Lily could be a relative of his or, but I don't see how. Well, we actually literally do not know their last name. Like Lily and Petunia could be daughters of somebody that we just don't know. We know um, their last name. We do? Mm-hmm. I don't know how we know it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You're right. It's Evans. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That was, I, I don't know. remember how we know it. Oh, because in the in Snape's vision flashback, yeah, Lily, Lily Evans. Lily Evans, yeah. That's right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay, you're right. We don't know any Evans. And ah! That was another one. Like Snape's worst memory was a creepy chapter. That was a sad one. Yeah. For whatever reason, it was it was sad and dark, but it didn't feel as creepy, maybe. Yeah, maybe not creepy. It was Ugh. just sad. It well, was I was like, just so hopeful that whole time. Like, oh, we're getting insight into like cool things. And then I was like, this is terrible. I know. Um, you always have that question, too. Like, well, why was that his worst memory? It's just weird. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that was a excursus. Um, but yeah, the, the not killing Lily thing is just weird. I just like, I feel like that's outside of the character of Voldemort. Yeah, there was a soft spot like we've never seen before because mm. he never hesitates for this. No, kind but of stuff. he might want her, her to see him kill yeah. Harry. That's actually true. So it's like, like almost more sinister. Mom. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, the weird part is he could have done that. He like the thing is he had full you know control of the situation. I know, but what but I'm he saying didn't is do anything different because she wouldn't move. It's like get out of my way. Hmm. No. Hmm. Because there is like something like she shielded him like this so she could be like, get out of my way, watch me kill your son. You know, mm. just it's gross. I guess. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe he just got tired of it. <laughs> he didn't want to say, <laughs> I got to say all of that. I got to say Vada Kedavra again. Come on. Yeah, it's just weird how, how casual it feels for yeah. Voldemort. Like it didn't even phase him the yeah. whole thing he's walking around just like thinking to himself wow how silly to have the blinds open as he like walks around um or maybe i was thinking that but mm -hmm. it's still just like he he feels so casual everything's like just a flick of the wrist you know mm -hmm. yeah um harry tried to do weird. accio or the way jim dale says it accio to his wand mm -hmm. and have we seen that before like the jedi Wandless. trick the no. accio to your wand because harry was saying it like he willing it to happen but it didn't work it and I was just wondering, happen. could it? It's it could. Yeah. So that would be broken, like wandless it? magic. Mm -hmm. And in theory, you combine wandless and um, wordless and you get yourself a real Jedi force yeah, power. For real. And and if James was better at that, he wouldn't have to go over to the couch to get his wand. It would just be turn around, wand, fight Voldemort. I remember one of my favorite moments in the Star Wars series was the Dooku Yoda fight. And I, up until that point, we had never seen a <laughs> Jedi just take their wand out of their holster like that. And there's this moment where like Dooku grabs his with his hands and Yoda oh. just Yoda just brushes aside his cloak and goes like this. <laughs> oh. And his his uh lightsaber just falls into his hands. I was like, we're gonna get such a good yeah, fight. This is the best. It was such a good one. I love that. It was a good reveal, a great moment. <laughs> yeah. Just showed his prowess. I you know? know, I know, exactly. All right, Wes. What's up? <laughs> um, but then there's another weird quote, and you guys made mention of this when uh this chapter was going on, but it says, and then he broke. He was nothing, nothing but pain and terror. And he must hide himself. Not here in the rubble of the ruined house where the child was trapped and screaming, but far away, far away. No, he moaned. The snake rustled on the filthy cluttered floor and he had killed the boy. And yet he was the boy. No. And now he stood at the broken window of Athilda's house, immersed in memories of his greatest loss and at his feet the great snake slithered over broken china and glass he looked down and saw something saw something incredible no harry it's all right you're all right he stooped down and picked up the smash photograph there he was the unknown thief the thief he was seeking 
Did Harry just hand him the the clue here? Because <laughs> he must have already known, right? Did he already know? Yeah. Uh, that's a good, this, good question. This makes it feel like Harry gave it to him. Something incredible. Yeah. Like like Voldemort was feeling like this was incredible. Yeah. Not Harry. And then so it just feels like, oh, Harry might have just accidentally led him to it. Um, <laughs> and if we're thinking the info is in Rita's book. They just whoever gets their hands on that book and can read the story. Yeah, right. But it also sounds like Voldemort might have been involved in making the whole thing happen, especially if uh, if he was influencing Rita or involved in the interview or something else. So I think Voldemort's got a leg up on this one. Yet he was the boy. Ugh. Um. Yeah. What is that line? He had killed the boy and yet he was the boy. And the whole thing is italics, but was is not. Yeah. And it's just, it's like emphasizing, yet he was the boy. It's like, again, that connection between Voldemort and Harry. Yeah, like right. in that moment, he briefly felt the same flashback to Harry, not flashback, but like he was seeing from Harry's eyes for a second. It felt um, the same way Harry is seeing from his eyes now. But then I feel like he must have run away from Harry again because it said he must hide himself. He's nothing, pain and terror. So I feel like that plus Harry's natural capacity for love mm. maybe he wouldn't have been able to survive in harry's mind because even if he was the boy it's not like he could just take over harry and live um yeah harry was in too happy of a place so innocent baby harry i think was too too loved for voldemort to take over mm. so he had to run off somewhere else maybe mm. yeah that is a weird line and then one of the saddest last little bits of this you're the one who needs sleep. No offense, but you look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Only the Thanks. first part of that. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm fine. I'll keep watch for a while. Where's my wand? She did not answer. She merely looked at him. Where's my wand, Hermione? She was biting her lip and tears swam in her eyes. Harry, where's my wand? She reached down beside the bed and held it out to him. The holly and phoenix wand was nearly severed in two. One fragile strand of phoenix feather kept both pieces together, hanging there. The wood had splintered apart completely. Harry took it into his hands as though it were a living thing that had suffered a terrible injury. He could not think properly. Everything was a blur of panic and fear. Then he held out the wand to Hermione. Lumos. Now this is like after he like tried to mend it. And the mm. wand spark, uh, sparked feebly and then it went out. Harry pointed at Hermione. Expelliarmus. Hermione's wand gave a little jerk, but it didn't leave her hand. The feeble attempt at magic was too much for Harry's wand, which split in two again. He stared at it, aghast, unable to take it in. <laughs> Do they stand a chance now? So it sounds like the yeah. wand was like a nunchuck here. Then they tried to repair it. <laughs> Yeah. And then it broke into mm -hmm. clean break, Phoenix yeah. Feather and all is kind of implied. Yeah. Man, that does stink. And now Grigorovich, we think, is dead. Ollivander, we don't know. But I feel like you got to repair this wand. This is the one. It chose Harry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, But how? I, I, I also didn't like get, how... I mean, there's multiples. Multiple wands from, the, from uh, Fox. Choose, yeah. Oh, like another wand could choose Harry. Like what? Like what wand? The only thing is that that one was the same core, so that's what's weird. Yeah, I the know. same as Voldemort's. Exactly. That's yep. what I was thinking. But it's cool. Like if another wand can choose Harry, then like where's Dumbledore's wand? Or why, cause what happened Dumbledore, to his Why would Dumbledore's wands? wand choose him? That's the I don't question. know. Why like, would any wand choose him? Yeah, true. Why would any wand? Why, well, why did this one choose him? Yeah. You know? But it, we don't even know what the source of this gold magic was either. Mm. Was that deeper? Um, is that because Harry has something great within him that a wand would want to be a part of? Um, I, I don't thought know. you were all, all about the wands gaining. Gaining knowledge. XP as time goes on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so why wouldn't he? Well, the thing is, we just don't see a lot of wand transfers. You know, like things like um, Neville. Got a new Voldemort wand. was trying it a lot. What? He was trying a bunch of different wands. Yeah. Voldemort. And then Ron got a new wand. Mm -hmm. His old one was hand me down. But like Ollivander's gone. 
Yeah, so where, Grigorovich is gone. New, where are they going to find a wand? That's what I'm saying. They're not going to find new ones, right? Like, they're going to have to use one that used to be somebody else's. Mm. So can Harry get one from his parents? Could he go use Hagrid's old wand in the umbrella or Can't something? Like, what like, happens to the wand? They just bury it with them? Well, we don't know. Yeah, like, I'm just that saying, would make like, sense, right? It's like a thousand, no, more than that. Yeah. <laughs> they can go grave digging. and uh, <laughs> There's a lot of grave digging references. In grab, these some, uh, <laughs> grab some wands. <laughs> but if that even is a thing, although grave digging as a wizard, there must be a, a quick way to do it. There's probably a spell for digging up a grave. Um <laughs> or you could just Creepy. apparate into it uh, too much. <laughs> uh, 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 you're like stuck, stuck in the coffin, feeling just, around uh, for. Grab this wand real uh, quick. I'll see you later. <laughs> but if you did your tiny spell first, yeah, there you go. Then maybe you'd need to be um, uh, transfigured, or an- your animagus would have hmm. to be a worm or something. Nice. I don't know how you get the wand out. Yeah, that would be really <laughs> hard to do. But uh, hmm. Yeah. yeah, Harry needs a new wand. Oh, almost peaked. It definitely um, feels like a hopeless end to this chapter. A yes, very, very this was low very moment. low. Yeah, like you're uh, almost excited because you're like, finally, they're gonna go to Godric's Hollow. They're gonna find the sword. This could be great. They see the grave, par- the parents of the grave, yeah, that's what and, she keeps or the grave doing. of the parents, and we're like, yeah, nice. It's up, and then really far. And she down. gives you so much hope, and then she says, "Nope, I'm gonna not only Cut are they not the gonna see back. it, I'm gonna kill and destroy mm-hmm. Harry's wand here." Oof. Well, you know, I wasn't as negative as Harry was. Mm. I mean, I'm an optimistic person, but <laughs> it also just felt like Hermione took the blame for breaking the wand and Harry accepted that and said, yeah, it is your fault, even in his own mind. And he was blaming her and was like mad at her. But I'm also thinking like, be glad you get out of this alive. Yeah. You now got away from Voldemort again. You messed with his head more than he can mess with yours. For sure. Maybe. And then like you got answers, not answers, but you have some leads now. You find a copy of Rita's book. Go talk to Xenophilia. So you think they go should talk to Crumb. Read, yeah, the life and like, of Albus Dumbledore. All of these things are things that could give them clues. I, I can't believe they haven't read it already. Yeah. This is the life of, of Dumbledore. Yeah. Even if Rita doesn't mean to, there could be a clue in there. Mm. And now it feels like the only way they can find that picture to confirm who it is. Mm. So that's a book that's selling lots of copies. Go to Diagon Alley, talk to the twins, buy a copy of the book, do something else. And then, I don't know, it just feels like they've got some leads now. This is great. Mm. But they're they're being a little negative about it. But I'm just thinking they have way more answers than they did before Godric's Hollow. Um, and they made it out alive. And the wand was the only casualty. Yeah, but and still, Matilda the bit. wand was really the only thing that was protecting Harry. Yeah, so maybe Not Harry's maybe putting more faith thing, in the but... wand than I was. Because <laughs> yeah. I just wasn't, like, I was disappointed. And I was like, oh, no. Like, if it wasn't but, for the wand, Harry would have died very quickly in this, these In books. the Triwizard Tournament at in the, the end. Gave graveyard. In the yep. graveyard. In the graveyard. Yep. It does seem that way. But maybe then, it's not really the wand. That's kind of what I'm hoping. Dumbledore seems to think it's just the wand. But maybe it not feels just the like wand. He's but, helpless now. Yeah. Yeah, but it's ancient magic. No one knows about ancient magic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <goodness. laughs> um, it's true. <laughs> I wonder how much studying you have to do to uh, make a wand. Wait, what was that thing you have to do with the little things in the trees and the, the bow truckles? The, oh, the trees. man. I don't know. They don't know how to make a wand. I don't know how to make a wand. No, bow truckles just reside in wand trees. <laughs> so they can find a wand tree based on the bow truckles, and then they can start making wands. They don't know how to put a core in a wand, yeah. though. Yep. It's never going to work. I know. I don't know. Yeah, because I, I don't. I you don't think that Hermione's wand is going to respond really well to Harry. No. It's trained for Hermione. So you're yep. like, how? He, what is he going to do here? Is he going to find some wand that, that works? It's got to be his least? father's wand that is still stuck behind the cushions of the couch in that house. <laughs> um, <laughs> so is he going to go back to the Godric's Hollow? I feel like there's a chance his heart is there and his treasure is also there. <laughs> um, there's a chance there's a wand. There's a chance they have to actually go back to that gravestone and repair the fading stone and read the Ig- Ignatius. What's his name? Ig- Ignatius. I forget. That guy. They got to read the, his gravestone. The, there are only so many leads they have. And going back there is one of their leads. So maybe. Um, it could be worth going back there. And if they left the house exactly as it was, 
what are the chances James Potter's wand is hiding in there? Ugh, mm. Pretty low. That seems very <laughs> unlikely. But but I still feel like there could be some more answers there. I just don't know what they are. Mm. It's good. Really good chapters. Yeah. Anything else in this chapter before we uh, do the final little tidbits? No, that's it for me. I keep accidentally turning and seeing the next. Thing. <laughs> well, you can now. Oh, yeah. We already looked at this at the end of the live read. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> the Life and Lies of Albus Dumbledore. Uh, the book. Right. Yeah, yeah. They got to find it. it. Yep. There's, a, there's a picture of his wand there. Check if it's still severed. Oh, yeah. Is you're right. You're right. Severed? I was looking close. And in the picture, it looks like it's still a little nunchucky. It's still hanging on by the face. It feather? looks like it kind of could be, but it, it's genuinely hard to tell. Huh. Um, like it might have just re snapped back to its nunchuck form. Yeah. Um, but it could be broken, broken. Yeah. But maybe, do we know any really great wizards who could repair? Hermione should have been more confident with her repair. She was like, R -r -r -r. Mm, maybe like, if she is, yeah. I feel like somebody might be able to. I don't know who. I don't know. I don't know if anybody, because Ron's wand was snapped, so I don't know if anybody could repair Ron, yeah, Ron's right. wand. Like, teachers were like, you need to get a new wand. That's and you it. know what? I think there's something to be said for the wood being whole. Yeah, yep. Once it breaks, maybe yep. it could never go back to what yeah, it was. Yeah, for sure. It's like glass. You're not going to ever put yeah. glass back together, you know? You have yep. to melt it down and redo it. I know. Um, wait, but what is... um. <laughs> sorry jen i keep extending bedtime with more questions that are so <laughs> silly about hagrid's wand we'll touch on it next time um can it be fixed <sighs> can it be fixed we'll stew on that question we'll talk about that next because if harry's wand is lying out i'm sure the next chapter we'll talk about it a little bit mm. um give me your favorites who is your uh hot tamale who's your house cup winner and what is your favorite moment in these two chapters I think the connection to the symbol is kind of neat that mm. Hermione, it's like finally like some answers like that she found in the book and then on the gravestone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That yeah, you're right. That could be a favorite moment because it was the only like <laughs> positives mm -hmm. that were in these two chapters Yep. besides surviving, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, besides surviving for sure. Yeah, that, those are, you're finally piecing this together. It is wild to me that this is like, um, the symbol you just, I see everywhere. And yeah. I and you just don't, don't know, know what it is yet. Is. And it's, we're uh, sadly halfway through this book already and you still don't know what <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. main symbol is for Harry Potter. You don't even it's know what the title of this book is. But I'm trying to forget it. Yeah. Like the title of this book is what? Deathly Hallows. What are the Deathly Allies? What is this? Shoot, Deathly we don't Allies? even know what they are yet. It's the title of the book. I'm no peeking. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And the Deathly Hall. Yeah. It's wild. But um, Yeah, you're right. We don't know anything. Yeah. Godric's Hollow. Yeah, no, I already said that because. Oh, you beat me. No, no. Remember, it's spelled differently, right? It is? Yeah, because mm -hmm. I, I said that when we were speculating at the end of the last it's book. Not where I was like, oh, oh, and what if it's that? And then yeah, right. John let me say stuff like along that line for a while. <laughs> and then he's like, but the spelling. I was like, oh, all right, yeah, true. <laughs> um, but could it be this? I forget what that means. Because we were saying hallow like like sacred. Yeah. So they're deathly sacred things. I know, but can't Godric's hollow be one of them? Godric's mm. hollow is a hallow? Is a deathly hallow? Mm. Could be. That's what I meant. <laughs> Mm. maybe spelling, maybe hallows are like magic spelling of. incantations <laughs> maybe these things that are the clues are things you have to say out loud and they're deathly hallows <laughs> um the other like chance oh because he's not having a wand anymore Ooh, you can practice his wandless magic right now deathly hallows yeah i don't know oh um, my favorite moment was in the graveyard i think because there was the excitement and anticipation and then Harry actually being able to let his emotions out. Yeah. And oh, I'll let you do the rest of your things. I was going to lead into more. <laughs> and that's my favorite moment. <laughs> my favorite Period. moment is that too, when he's standing at the grave of his parents. I think that's one of the most emotionally brutal moments in the series when he really lets himself be vulnerable. So you yeah. see a lot of growth from Harry in that moment. I might have liked that too. Yeah. 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 
I'm gonna go with that too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's um, fine. It's double trouble now. Mm-hmm. Hot tamale. Or favorite, yeah, house cup or hot, hot tamale. Um, house cup. It's. I feel like it goes to Harry or Hermione because, like, <laughs> it's one or yeah. One yeah, there's not a lot. To yeah, get out, and then he helps to get out. You away, can give it to so. James and Lily. True, because we got to like see more of the story, like yeah. Lily really seeing it and she feeling that. She the hot tamale, Lily. Yeah. 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 In honor of Lily, I'm giving Lily the hot tamale. I like that. Mm. Yeah, I feel like um, that makes sense, Lily. Uh, maybe I'll give her a house cup. Um, and then Hermione can get the hot tamale for making the the wreath of roses for uh, for Harry. I feel like she was very supportive, and even the hot tamale energy between Harry and Hermione in these chapters, mm, the yeah. uh, walking arm in arm through the yeah, kissing not... gate and uh, <laughs> the holding hands, holding yeah. hands, it just like it was it's cutesy just, and whatever. It's cute friendship, I think it's cute. Yeah, friendship. yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was very supportive. Hot tamale. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if it's hot tamale. tamale. Yeah, yeah, but neither is a tamale. mother dying for her son. <laughs> I mean, touche. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, let's be reasonable. I'm trying to well find played. at least a hint of romance here. <laughs> Danny's is way more of a yeah, than ours. I mean, is. I'm just no, ours no, is no, the no, coldest. No, no, no. Hot is you. sassiness, and yeah. she was sassy. Oh, so Matilda backshot. <laughs> Whatever. There just there wasn't a lot of hot tamale yeah. in this chapter, but yeah. you know. <laughs> but Harry Hermione, there was yeah. Nagini. Filling Nagini. Up, filling Ew. up the build the back shot. Oh boy. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> it was uh that was pretty gross, yeah. Mm. <laughs> but um, I feel like Harry did do a pretty good job in the battling. Yeah. And Harry and Hermione together, like they're you could give hot tamale house cup to any of these people because yeah, they were sure. all great in their own way. Yeah. Yeah. I'll probably give house cup to to Harry in this one, just for his emotional vulnerability. Yeah, oh, I love to see that growth. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, who are you? <laughs> I love to see that growth. Somebody <laughs> loves to see growth, you know. So cute. You know, because it was one of those things where the live read is not exactly conducive to tears, but. If I was reading that by myself in the right moment, that. that could bring up some emotion. You know what I mean? Because it's like... Uh, I've never seen that. You've never seen me cry while reading Harry Potter? Nope. Oh, uh, that's true. Uh, actually, if you looked over during Dumbledore's death, one tear fell. Caught it before it hit the ground. But, um, but it hit my cheek at least, and you could have seen it. Um, He's Fox. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good, yeah. So he sheds uh, a single tear, <laughs> and it's healing. So I he did a little wipe like this. Often, yeah. Danny is um, fox. Danny is the fox of the. So this wasn't quite that level, <laughs> but it was at least like, oh, you could feel the emotion, and if you could let yourself get there, I could see how this would be a spot where people would cry. Mm. Did you feel that way? <laughs> or were you still like asleep? <laughs> You're like just fading. You're like, yeah, yeah. this is a sleepy podcast. Danny carried us through this one. But um, did you guys give your house cup? No. <laughs> <laughs> just say a name. Just say Hermione or Harry. Her, I, we'll that's what I said. Say I'll yeah. go Hermione. Good yeah. for house cup. Well, thanks for joining <laughs> us on our journey. <laughs> Very fun the first time oh, readers. So oh, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> when Danny does his second time read, he's gonna do it with with you two, and then uh, with your um, with uh, Lauren and Brandon. But oh, then yeah, yeah. people are like, Danny's not gonna be able to hold back. He's gonna have to do his I own know. distinct podcast on everything that I was thinking. That I'm like, I I will not be that good at yeah. the subtle like holding yeah, yeah, yeah. back part because you're so good at remembering exactly what yeah. you know so far. And you're gonna and come like, to some, something in your second read. When you and come I'm across and you're like, oh my gosh, the good yep. thing insane. Is that they already know how yeah, things for sure. end.